Welcome to the Personal Development Trailblazers podcast, part of the Digital Trailblazer podcast family. This podcast is dedicated to bringing you experts and trailblazers to help you grow, learn, love, and help you transform into your best self. Welcome back, Trailblazers. If you're new here, I'm Alicia. Today, I'm talking with Cindy Burns. Cindy, it's so good to have you here today. Why don't you take a second to introduce yourself and tell people a little bit about what you do? Well, thank you for having me. Um, My name is Cindy Burns, and I, for 33 years, I was a wife and mother of six sons. We're all adults now. Um, One month shy of my 33rd wedding anniversary, my husband died uh, from lung cancer. It was a very short illness. He was diagnosed, and within three months, he was gone. And I went through a tough time. I went through a a really tough time. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my life should look like. And I didn't know any other widows. So I didn't know what was normal. I didn't know what to do. And I finally figured it out with a lot of... um, fails along the way, I guess. Um, But you learn from failures, right? And so I finally figured out that my new purpose, my purpose in life now, other since I'm not a wife and not a full time mother, my new purpose is to help other people going through what I went through. Um, Any kind of grief, any kind of loss causes grief loss from divorce, loss from estrangement. You know, you're estranged from a family member. There are adults who grieve for their lost childhood because they had to grow up too fast. And they don't realize that what they're feeling as an adult is actually grief. And I'm... I'm out here to, t- to talk to people and help them realize their grief and to come to terms with it and to be able to grow from it. Yeah, that is super important work. Grief is so tricky because it doesn't just happen when the event happens either. Right. It, it, it can come and go in waves and it's sometimes hard to sit in, but it's important to work through it for sure. So this is very important work that you're doing. Thank you. How how are you working with clients? What's maybe like the first step that you go through with them to help them recognize that it might be grief that they're dealing with? Well, the first step is just to talk, um, find out what's going on in their lives, um, whether they recognize the grief, if they know that that's what it is, I mean, obviously, if there was a death involved, they know that. But if it's more of one of these sneaky, hidden griefs, um, we'll talk about it. Find out where they are in their grief journey. Um, are they in the very beginning of active grief? Or maybe it's been a few years, but they're still kind of stuck because that's where I was. Yeah. Um, So how I help is individualized. I do have a membership, but I also do individual coaching and help people to realize where they are, teach them tips and tricks on how to manage their grief. Nobody can take it away. Grief, unfortunately, is with us for life. And nobody can make it go away completely, but we can make it manageable. And we can learn from it. We can grow from it. There is, there's really hope. There's, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, a a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And it's, it's a choice. You get to choose who you're going to be now. You get to choose how you want to show up in the world. You get to choose your new dream your, because your future is different now. So you get to choose what that's going to look like. 
Yeah. And you get it's it's all a choice. And I help you learn that and make those choices. I think there is power in that perspective for sure. I, I'm curious if you're in your work, you're seeing uh, everyone always hears about the five stages of, of grief. And is that accurate or is that something that people naturally go through? Do you, are you seeing a variant depending on the person? It's kind of accurate. Um, Dr. Kubler-Ross, when she came up with those five stages, it actually applied to people who were dying, who were given you know, the, the notice that they had a terminal illness. And those stages apply to that. And they actually kind of do go in a linear manner. The grief that comes after that we that we experience after their our loved one dies, there those five stages do exist, but there are also other stages. There's all kinds of emotions that that are involved. There's there's guilt, there's regret, there's um there's anger, and none of it goes in a linear fashion. Right. You might feel something one day and then you move on and, you know, you're feeling something else and then you go back to that first feeling and yeah, yeah it's none of it's linear and you have to learn to deal with each emotion, each stage as it comes. How do you teach people or coach people through those waves that come? Maybe they have made it through the initial pain of the, the loss, but it just keeps washing over them. What are some tips or advice that you give to those people? Well, that's where it come, I, my uh, process comes in. I help people learn who they are and who they want to be. And once you have that strength, that confidence, then you know you can go, you can get through anything. And as for the waves, when it comes, then you you know that you've been through it already. So you know how to deal with it. You know that it's not going to last forever. And you've been through it once. You can get through it again. And each time, it's not quite as powerful or painful as the first time. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's like it, grief has a half-life. It never goes away. But it does ease up over time if if we let it. Some people have unconsciously made the choice to sink into their grief and let the grief overtake them and the grief define them. And that's where I come in with helping them learn who they are, learn how to dream again, and to be able to stand there and say, you know, yes, I am a widow, or yes, I am a widower, but I'm so much more than that. Yeah. And you create a new life for yourself. Is there a tactical first step in that process that you can share with our listeners? The very first thing I tell people is to feel your feelings. Don't try to bury them. Um, I did. I didn't want my... Um, sons to worry about me. So I didn't let them see me cry. I did it all in private. And two weeks after my husband died, anybody would have said, oh, she's handling this really well. But, you know, I was one of those put a brave face on. I ended up with bleeding ulcer. Yeah. So you need to feel your feelings. You need to allow them to wash over you. You need to name them. Say, I'm I'm angry or I'm really lonely or, you know, all the different emotions that come up. If you once you name them, they don't have as much power over you. And once you know what anger feels like or what the loneliness feels like when it comes back you can recognize it and say okay i got through this once i can get through it again and like i said each time it's not quite as strong right 
uh, as you're talking, it's, it almost makes me think of like emergency preparedness. Like if you <laughs> have never been through a tornado, I live in the Midwest. So if you've never been through a tornado, the first time is probably really like causing a lot of anxiety, making mm-hmm. you really nervous or a lot of emotions that you're dealing with. But the next time, all of that is still there. But if you've had a plan, if you have a bag that you grab or you have yeah. that safe space to go, then it makes the process a little easier, even though it's still very scary or traumatic. It, it's it's less than it could be. So I yeah, there's that, things to fall back on to help you through. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a really good point. So I'd love to hear some of your proudest moments or biggest successes working with clients and helping them get through grief. I'm sure that you have a ton that you could pull from. And I'm sure that, you know, a lot of stories come to mind. Is there something that you can share that can? Well, the, the, give us biggest, insight? the biggest success, I think, is that I had um, a, gr- a very small group membership and we met once a week. And there was a gentleman and two women, and we all became fairly close. And there were weeks when I said, okay, I'm going to make you cry this week. (laughs) And we opened up a lot. And come to find out, the man and one of the women were talking outside of the group. They fell in love online. Over the phone, through Zoom, they fell in love, and now they're together. Aww. And this this was six months ago, and they're still together. And they're, obviously, they still grieve for their, their wife and their husband, but they found each other, and they found a new life with somebody. And it's, I'm not a dating coach. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't facilitate that. I just had the, the section, you know, they, they got strong enough that they allowed themselves to love again. Oh, that's really beautiful. Yeah. 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 I love your disclaimer. You're not a dating coach, but you, you did, you did help them get to a place where they were okay with allowing someone else in. And that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to open yourself up. Um, to new love because you don't want to lose that one. You know, you don't want to go through it again. And um, it's I would, yeah, you be pretty brave to do it. I would imagine that there would be almost sort of a, a feeling of you don't want to betray the person who you spent so much time loving, even though they're not here anymore. I, I've never been through it, but I would, I can put myself in that position and think like, oh, that would be really difficult. I wouldn't want to do anything to hurt this person, even though they're no longer here with you. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that's hard. Yeah. And we talk about that and um, it boils down to, did they want you to be happy? And, you know, the answer I'm sure is yes, they want you to be happy. Um, I some people, they they feel guilty anytime they're happy, you know, when they're la- when they laugh or they enjoy something because oh I should be I should be sad I should be grieving well no you shouldn't there's no should you know you should be feeling whatever you're feeling and um, you know your loved one probably loved to hear you laugh loved to make you smile. So it's okay, you know. Yeah, absolutely. And falling in love again is okay. It's not because they're still there, and and hopefully your new person understands that. And in this case, obviously they do because they both lost somebody, right? Um, right. But you know, hopefully whoever your new person is understands that there was there's always a place in your heart for the one you lost. Yeah, absolutely. So you touched on this a little bit when you mentioned doing calls over Zoom. Um, So you're not only working in person with people. How are you currently finding clients to work with? I actually have only been working online. I have not gotten any um, 
local clients, although I've decided I want I want to do that. And I'm reaching out to local funeral homes to see if they want to partner with me. Yeah. Before that, it was I do have a free Facebook group for widows and widowers only. And um, my clients came from the members in there or come from um, word of mouth referral. Or maybe they've heard me on a podcast or, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that you have a Facebook group because I think that's an excellent way to provide free value and then be able to nurture those people maybe in a moment when they really need something extra mm -hmm. and you're there and you're there, the first person that they think of. So that's excellent. I also love that you're wanting to do local and, and thinking about partnering with funeral homes. I think that that's an excellent choice. Uh, and to tie that in with online, I could see that you could even reach out to um, funeral homes anywhere across sure. the U.S. and you could partner with them and tell them, you know, here's what I do. Here's how I help people mm -hmm. um, and maybe even send an episode like this to them so that they can hear how you provide value and then they That's can partner. That's actually a very good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. My pleasure. So um, are there any other future plans for growth for you? Well, I want to grow my membership. That's that's primary to me. Um, when I started this, that's what I wanted to do was to have a membership. I feel I feel that's the way I can I can help the most number of people because one on ones there's only so many hours in a day, and you know. Um, but in a membership, it's they they can help each other, and I'll go live once a week or more if necessary and do group coaching, Q and A's, that kind of thing. And have, um, I have a whole slate of people who want to come in and speak to my people. Yeah. Um, image coaches, dating coaches, financial people, um, just all kinds of people that could be of benefit to people who've lost someone. Absolutely. And um, so that's that's I want to have a referral network network so that when somebody says, you know, they have a problem or a question and it's not something in my sphere of right. expertise, I have somebody to send them to. Yeah, I think that's a really great move. Uh, there are so many things that, you know, you live in a partnership for so long that it's a teamwork effort and then one one of your teammates is gone maybe they took care of paying all the bills or they took care of yes. all of the um you know fill in the blank and then this one person is left with all of the responsibility i think it's a great idea to bring people into that membership to provide value i think that will be an excellent uh value to the members in your group um, yeah. And I think like we mentioned before, really reaching out to across the country, partnering with people mm -hmm. and getting those referrals, that'll be a, a great way to do that. And I'll be speaking to the local hospice um, group yeah. in October. So hopefully something will come from that as well. Yeah. Partnership. I, yeah. There, there are lots of ways that you can collaborate with mm -hmm. existing businesses, um, services that are adjacent to what you do. And that, that could be really beneficial in growing your business. Yeah. I've uh, recently befriended two women who have a grief, or uh, I'm sorry, a death doula practice where they, oh. they help people transition to that. Right. They help the family, they help the patient. And um, that's something I've thought about, but I'm not sure I can do. You yeah. have to be a really special person to be able to do that. Yeah. I am a, grief, a certified grief doula, so that I come. That's where I spend. I they do the death, you know, the act of dying, and I come in um, yeah. when they need somebody for grief afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. All of this is so important. And you're right. It does take a very special personality to work in anything that has to do with, mm -hmm. with death and dying and hospice and, and all of, all of this whole world for sure. Uh, Cindy, this has been so valuable. I know our audience is going to love this. If people have loved what you've said here today and they want to connect with you more, can you point them in the right direction? 
Well, I have a guided grief journal and journaling helped me. And this one asks you questions, gives you prompts. Uh, you can print it out. You, so if one page really speaks to you, you can print a dozen pages of that. Um, you don't even have to write. You can just read the prompts and think, you know, get, get it to think. And it's free. And it's at cindyjburns.com slash journal. Perfect. So I will link that in the show notes so that people can find it really easily. Uh, what social media are you living on? We can push people to follow you there too. I'm on Facebook quite a lot. Um, I'm Cindy Judd, J-U-D-D Burns on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm not much on Instagram. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start though. <laughs> um, but that's, and TikTok, not at all. But I, I have an account. <laughs> Are you doing video content on Facebook? Yes, I do. Um, I go live every Monday at 4.15. It's called Monday morning coffee break in the afternoon. There's a whole oh, reason for that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's good. That's really good. Uh, so if you're wanting to cross post to Instagram, use that meta business suite, yes. and then you can schedule both at the same time. Uh, Cindy, this has been really beneficial. I know that people really need this and uh, maybe they don't need it today, but they might need it tomorrow or next week or next year. And uh, thank you so much for being here, sharing this with our audience. I've enjoyed our, our conversation. Thank you. Unfortunately, nobody gets through life without experiencing grief. Yeah, you're and, absolutely um, right. Yeah, you know, I'm here if you need me. All right. Well, I will link everything in the show notes so that people can find you very easily. Uh, thanks again for being here and for everyone listening. We would love it if you'd like this episode, share it with a friend and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you.